set this up so we're, we're going to kind of play around so I can actually log into the board here in a minute. So you're going to see how you screen share too. But I wanted to show the hardware stuff first. Thank you everyone for joining. This is like what you all will be doing with your students in the Zoom and kids in the room. So first things first, I'm going to kind of show you the hardware. I'm also going to show you how you can connect the camera and do fun stuff in Zoom. So right now, you're just seeing me with my webcam up and I'm going to actually share my phone. Now you should see my phone is connected and I can move a little bit closer so I can show you some hardware and board. To turn it on, here's your power button down here. This is the on. This home button right here actually cycles through with connecting either an input or as a PC. So that's that home button down here. So it will pull up this right here and I'll see my inputs. When I select an input, I have all of these options. PC, Android, HDMI 1, 2, 3, D, VGA. So you have all these different inputs. Okay. You're going to mostly use it as a PC because when you select that option, input PC, it's going to pull up a login like you're logging in on your APS device. Show you down here a couple of the buttons. There's an undo button down here that lets you cycle through some menu stuff. Volume buttons are on the front as well. Plus these USB ports, which we'll talk more about those in a second. So I'm gonna do another screen share. Another cool thing, I'm going to screen share with my camera. So the main thing you see on the screen is me. That's another cool thing we'll talk about. You're good when you put it on and you see this. You click okay. You log in just like you log in on any of your APS laptops. It'll take a minute. The first time you log in, it might say it's going to take a few minutes to set up. Don't be alarmed by that. That's because it's creating folders to keep your stuff locally on the device. It's set up. I already logged in earlier, so it didn't take that long. So if it says, wait a few minutes, take a break, come back, you don't only have to do that one time to initially get it set up. So as you can see, it has Windows uh, apps. You've got a default settings. You've got the Chrome browser, the Microsoft Edge browser, the Mimeo Studio, which is the default app that comes on here, which is their interactive whiteboard app kind of like for those that are coming from Promethean it's like active inspire but different the main things you're going to want to to pay attention to your board should automatically be connected to the internet you can tell that it's connected by there's a little computer icon down here that means it's connected it's they're all hardwired they shouldn't be on wireless so you should not have a worry uh, worry about it connecting you can adjust your volume here on the panel by selecting down here just like you would on your teacher laptop so i can adjust the volume here and then also I've set it so my keyboard is there. This is one of the first things you're gonna wanna do because teachers always go, I'm tapping and I have no keyboard. So over here, if you press and hold on the taskbar, it will pull up these options. You're gonna wanna select where it says show touch keyboard button. So if I tap, notice I don't have a little keyboard icon down here. If I press and hold, I wanna select show touch keyboard button. Now I've got a little keyboard that when I touch that, I'm always gonna have access to a touch keyboard. That's kind of important. Now, you can connect your keyboard and mouse, so I do, that's what's great about these USB ports. So I have one, I've connected a wire, uh, wired mouse, but you can also connect a USB Bluetooth mouse that you wanna use. I've also connected a wired keyboard, just cause sometimes people can type better on a keyboard. You can use wired or wireless, that's up to you. It's, it's plug and play, so you don't have to worry about installing any software, it'll just work no problem. Because this is basically, it's a computer, but a tablet in one. Couple of things on the bottom down here, this is like your main taskbar. That's where you're gonna wanna keep apps that you want easy access to. So by default, we've got micro, the old school Internet Explorer. We don't use that anymore. We might use Edge. So I'm gonna open up Google Chrome, because we know we use Chrome for most things. You can press and hold. When I press and hold, I can say, I want to pin this to the taskbar. So Chrome's gonna always stay there on the bottom. This works the same on your laptop too. So if you're like, oh, I can't ever find Chrome. Any app you always want, just right click on the app once you've opened it and say, pin it to the taskbar. So we're gonna wanna pin that. Also, you'll notice that again, this is in default settings. You're gonna see that it has this envelope icon, which is email option. You don't wanna use that because you're using Outlook, webmail or standard Outlook. You can also remove things. So if I press hold, I can unpin, take it away. You don't want to accidentally open it in the middle of your session and you don't need that there. So we're going to unpin it. The other one that we're going to unpin is the shopping cart box right there. Unpin the Microsoft store. You can go in and, uh, and 
download things later if you needed to or request apps to be installed, but you don't want to have that there because I've had teachers that accidentally click on it and then they're stuck in that in the middle of their lesson. So unpin anything you don't need to have access to down here so you don't accidentally open it. We've, we've now pinned a Google Chrome. That's our default one. Log in here just you like, like you log in on your computer. So I've logged into Chrome. So you want to make sure you're logged in here so that we'll remember your bookmarks. So anything you do on Infinite Campus, my backpack, all of those apps will automatically populate up here. So I'm logged into my APS credentials. So it brought up my backpack. It brought up my Google Drive automatically. I can log in to Zoom on this device. So when you're thinking about how you're running your lessons, you have a couple of options. One, log in on your laptop, connect your laptop to this like a second monitor. You can either plug it in with a VGA, which we know we're very familiar with. That's the blue cord or an HDMI. The ports are all on the side over here. So you can plug directly. So depending on your computer, some teachers' computers have, they have the older ones, you have VGA. You can connect that and then it will recognize it you then on this instance, on the home button, it would be under input. You would pick the VGA, hitting that home button. That's how you know it's connecting and it's recognizing it as a second monitor. If you connect it with an HDMI, then you would, then you would select that and then you'll be good to go. You can connect your laptop to it and then basically, so I have teachers that want to be able to work on their laptop and then drag what they're doing up on the second monitor. That would be your box light board. Option two is that you can control, this is where you run your lesson. And so you log into Zoom on here, you screen share from here and all of that. So in order to do that, I'm gonna log into Zoom. And this is what's cool. I'm logged in on my laptop to Zoom, but I can go into my account and join on my board as well. So that way you're logged in with two devices. As you'll see, here's our Boxlight training. I wanna join it from my board. I will open it up. The first time you do it, it's gonna download Zoom just like it did on your laptop, and then you'll be able to activate it. So notice I'm getting that echo. I can mute myself here, so now I'm not gonna have an echo. So anytime you do use multiple devices, so maybe you log in on your laptop and you log in onto your box light, you only want the speaker turned up on one of them so you don't have that echo. So right now we're in the matrix. Isn't that wild? Because you're seeing me inside of there. So what I can do here, I can see that we're all in here. I can switch and share my screen. I'm gonna, when I do that, it's gonna cut off the one over here. From here, I can share my screen, share the whiteboard. So now I've got the touch capability of the whiteboard that you might already have been using in Zoom to annotate on here. It's a lot easier to do. I can also add an iPhone or I can go to advance and I can add in content from a second camera. That means I've connected a camera. So I've got a, this is just a, one, of, one of many different document cameras that we have access to. So, so yours might look different. This is the one that I have. So I was using that as an example. Most of them artic articulate, which means that I can point it down to show something, or I can point it up to show uh, what's going on in the classroom, for example, a science experiment or presentation. It has, generally it has one USB cord that has to be connected. So I've plugged that in here. So what will happen is we'll recognize that as a camera. So check this out, this is kind of cool. And now it's gonna switch. You're looking at my shoes here, but you get the idea. There's an autofocus button. And now you can actually show what's happening in the classroom on the big screen, but you get the idea. So I can go in here and I've got, that is my second screen. So that's that share option. Second camera makes that big screen for whatever you're trying to show. We're gonna go back to basic. I can just show what's going on on my screen. And now if I'm demonstrating for you all, let's take a look at our Google, my Google Classroom. So now in the Zoom, you'll notice it's highlighting what I'm sharing from my screen here is in the Zoom. I have the flexibility and look up here, I can see you all. So I can see my Zoomies and my roomies so I can see the kids in the room. So imagining I had friends here, I'm all by my lonesome. Uh, and I can see you all up here. So I can also even change this to gallery view. So I can see you all there. Look at y'all and your wonderful faces. So you're up here, right? And I've got what's happening up here. So I can go, all right, let's go here. Let's make sure you guys have signed in. There's our Google Classroom. And it's being shared into the Zoom simultaneously. I'm gonna go to share on my screen because I've logged into Zoom on my board and I'm going to select whiteboard inside of Zoom. Click share. So it's the same whiteboard you were using inside of Zoom. I've just shared it 
from my board so that way everybody can see it. So what I've done is I've got my, my computer here with a webcam attached to it, or you can use the built-in cam. So that's how you're seeing me here talk to you this way, logged in on my laptop. Okay. In addition to that, I logged in on my board, flexibility of sharing what's on my board with you all as well. That means I can turn and do a face-to-face -face talk and you see me, and now I'm technically facing my classroom because I've got my laptop facing this way. I'm using a webcam. Uh, when I turned on the dot cam, it's, it's actually attached here if I start the video. Now that's the dot camera. Notice that now I'm in here as a second camera. You'll see me there. Hello. That's the dot camera connected. And that just gives you flexibility of showing what's going on in the classroom or just connecting with your students a little bit more easily. I will admit I'm using a, a, a better webcam because I had one, but I will switch over so you can see the real deal from my laptop. Just a little bit. The lighting's not as great, but it's still pretty clear. That in no filters whatsoever i did um i will admit that on here but i admit i put on the zoom filter that said fixed appearance and i was like we go to the far end of that let's fix that real quick <laughs> is i've actually set up my laptop up higher so that if i'm standing moving by doing that it's putting it up more eye level for me so it's more flattering but also i can stand here i can type and it gives me that flexibility of like the, the angle. So I just popped it up on like a little step stool that was here at the office. Cause unfortunately when we set our laptops down and we point the camera up, it's not a flattering look. So technically you could put it up on a chair if you wanted to, that would give you enough height. If you wanted them to really see something as a primary thing like me, I can go here and switch this from just me being up there. If I choose to share my screen, I'm gonna stop it from over here. And I say, I wanna share it on here. Notice now the primary thing you see is me, right? So that's a really good way if you connect your document camera and you really wanna make sure students focus on you is that's the way to trick Zoom into doing it for you. So there's two ways to, to toggle through your camera options down at the bottom. So if I go up here, there's a little arrow up. It lets me pick, but I can toggle between more, multiple cameras. There's only one here, but on my other camera, I can switch it and I can toggle between the SD camera to my other camera, which is this one. And it will switch to a, a different camera. The lighting's not as good. And then I can uh, stop sharing my screen as well. So notice when you do the screen share, it may that be the primary thing you saw. So that's the advantage of having a second camera is switching it. And then they can't say, well, I can't see you. Where are you? The other thing is telling them that they can pin you so that you that you show up as the primary thing, but that's definitely a benefit of having a document camera. So the document camera can be connected here. So I can set that as my second. So the document camera can be attached to here or to the box light. By connecting it to my laptop, then it gives me that second camera option. And I made a video on how to do that and you can go back and watch and it shows you where the setting is and how you switch it. So what, and, and when we say second camera, natively your laptop has a web it has a built-in webcam. And then when you add a document camera, that's the second camera. Unfortunately, on the box light, there's only one camera, but notice I tricked it because I just said, oh, use it as a second camera. And it put it in that camera mode and made it full screen. So I'll do that again. I can go over here, screen share, advance, content from a second camera. And now it makes that the primary thing. Notice that's the biggest thing that's on my screen is that second camera. So you can toggle. This really helps with being able to show Here's what's going in the classroom if you were if you wanted them to see what's going on and then you can still monitor your students in the Zoom. So using that second camera has purposes on your laptop or on your box light. This also has a built-in microphone. So when you connect that, it will recognize that it has a microphone and it'll go, oh, do you want to use that as your microphone? Now keep in mind, this isn't like the best microphone in the world, but it will pick up audio. In addition to that, when we talked previously about the headset, I'm using my headphones because nobody else is in the room, but we talked about using that headset piece, the voice amplifier as another option to project your voice as well. The other thing is, is that right now I'm just showing you my screen, which it's hard for you to see. So the best option is if I log into my board, uh, into Zoom, then I can actually share my screen here. So I'm gonna maximize this, share my screen again, and we're gonna share. And now we're back to, this is what you all are seeing in the Zoom. So, for instruction, it makes it a lot easier for students to follow along because now I can talk you through what's going on here, but the students in the classroom can see what, what, what's happening. A couple other things I would point out is that this does have a speaker. So I've got headphones in so I could hear you all, 
but if I wasn't doing that, I could turn that up so the students in the classroom could hear what's happening. All right, when you say hook up your laptop, so there's two different scenarios. So initially when we started, I logged in. Right now, I don't have my laptop connected. I've logged into Zoom on the board. I've connected the document camera, so I have a camera. So technically, if you're going from room to room, I'm, I'm looking at this computer right here. The easiest way so that less cables to connect makes it a lot easier. I logged into Zoom first on my computer like you normally would do, like you were at home. Log into Zoom. Then I went on my box light and I logged into Zoom up here on the APS dashboard and clicked join the meeting. So now I'm in here twice. That's why if you look to Jennifer Hall. So I did not physically connect to the board because right now this is beneficial for me to be able to talk to you here. You can see the board behind me. We can talk about things. If you do want to connect a board, you can connect with either a VGA or HDMI. That means you have to put this board into input mode down here on that home screen right here, that home button. You have to tell it that you've connected the, whether it's HDMI or VGA. And then basically then it becomes, this isn't a computer anymore. This is just a monitor. So right now I'm having the benefit of two computers and changing out what I want to show and do. So here I can come over and type physically on the computer or I can go over here and use the touch capabilities of this one. If I connect my laptop to the board, then it's now basically a second monitor. You wanna save those files and upload them to your Google Drive so that it's portable to take with you wherever you're working. I have access to breakout rooms up here, so I can control them here. And then I could see who's in what breakout room up on the board, if you wanna do it that way, or you can do it from your laptop. So either one you can control because technically, I'm logged in twice, and so I have the same amount of controls on either device. Yes, if you put it up on the board, everyone would see it, and I like what you said. I think that's a great way if I have five kids in the room and they're captains of each of the breakout rooms and you can walk the room and see what they're doing. But yeah, at that, in that case, I, I suggest that you either uh, do it from your laptop so that you can privately see what's going on in each room without putting them on glass on the board. Or if you did do it on the board, they could see them and maybe you have headphones in so you're hearing what they're saying without the whole class here. So let, let's, I love that you asked that question. So I'm gonna give you all the powers. So go ahead and share your screen. Pick something that you would like to share and you're gonna now, we're gonna see it here on my computer and we're also gonna hear, see it up here. We're in the matrix again. All right, go for it. There you go. So notice now it's in the Zoom and it's up here for any student as well. So if you were doing an activity where students were walking through a writing activity or they'd answered a question or they, done an annotation over an image for science or something, you could say, all right, I could say, all right, let's share yours and let's take a look. And it would be up on the screen and everybody could see it. As you can see, the benefit of having the zoom on the big screen allows students in the room and you'd be able to kind of highlight, point, talk about things in a lesson. The more you do it, the more comfortable you're going to get. The main thing is I know we got kids coming before we know it. Get in there and try it. But right now, since kids aren't with you, you're just pretend like students are in the room and run it like that, you know. Imagine it's like every sporting event lately that's got those, you know, paper cardboard people in the events. You have pretend students. Yes, experiment. That's all you can do. You, and, and here's the other thing. Tell your students, this is all new. I'm trying new things. We're going to see how it goes. And if on the first day you realize that you're sharing the wrong screen and the wrong the camera's connected, all that, kids know that we fail forward. Say, look, I'm trying it. And, and honestly, they'll probably go, here's what you need to connect and do because they all, they, they're, they're, they all know this stuff, right? But just tell them you're trying new stuff. Also check in with them and say, you know, especially with the grouping and using the camera, does it work? Is, did you like being able to see the whole class and stuff like that? Mm -hmm.